against Dignitas, because that's actually something that hasn't been banned against Dignitas yet this split, right. but it is something that Crumbs has shown a proficiency for in the past. Maybe this was a scrim result that they've gotten intel on, or they've yeah. just been checking Crumbs' matches of late. Uh, very interesting that they would ban it so early. Another player we're watching coming into this champion select is Cutie Pie. His picks of Lucian have not found victories, but he is 5-0 on that Jinx. So mm -hmm. we'll see what they decide to go. It is left up. We've seen a lot of Sivir being focused, but Thresh is going to be the first one for TSM. If I'm Dignitas right now, or if I'm a Dignitas analyst, I tell him to pick Jinx and Annie at some point in this game. They've already Ooh. picked Caitlyn. They haven't done it. Caitlyn for Cutie Pie. Undefeated with Jinx, and I understand that Jinx uh, is vulnerable in some fights, right. especially against a, a person as talented as Bjergsen to kind of get to him. Mm -hmm. But I feel like you got to play until you lose with it. Yeah, and then Not Crumbs going again to something he hasn't, or Crumbs, I'm sorry, Caitlyn isn't something that Cutie Pie has played within the split. No. I'm sure he's proficient on it. Uh, that, pick is, that pick is more of a denial, I think, mm -hmm. at Wild Turtle. Wild Turtle is a fantastic Caitlyn player. He's played it three times, yep. went 3-0 and with it, and they're moving Turtle onto something else. Making him take the Lucian. He is going to take the Lucian. He's fared all right, a 2-1 and one in three plays. So yep. we'll see what he can do. We're going to see another Trundle this game. We'll see what Dyrus can do with that. Yeah, so he opts not to take Shivana into mm -hmm. Mundo because he doesn't like that matchup. Instead, first time Trundle for Dyrus. Trundle is definitely a much stronger pick against Mundo. We've seen Trundles uh, do very well against Mundo, especially in the European LCS, not so much over here in North America. The Trundle was that guy that everybody was like, hey, let's bring back the troll. He does well against these tanky guys. Like you said, that Annie being picked up. And we'll see another Nidalee as, uh, as well as Scara locks that in. Yeah, so a lot of first time picks yep. for people in this game, especially Dignitas right here. Caitlyn first time, Nidalee first time for yep. the Dignitas members. It'd be interesting. Scara has kind of uh, had a passive year, I feel. Mm. He hasn't been the, I'm going aggressive, I want all the CS Just Scara. farming like really well has. with Gragas, yeah. waiting for the team fights and letting, right. letting I'm a cutie pie do a lot of the, <laughs> the killing in some of these Taking fights. Taking down all the turrets and people with turrets. But they're going pretty poke heavy this time. Dignitas has done some good poke comps in the past, but TSM usually has the coordination to initiate really well, and these last two picks are most likely going to focus around being good initiators. Let's see really what the odd one picks up here. That would be new for the odd one if he were to lock that in. With Vi up. Right, yeah. Yeah. Whoa. There it is. The Kha'Zix was only been banned out once against mm -hmm. Team Solo mid, mm -hmm. and now it's being picked up. Yeah, well, Kha'Zix, the bug, has... He's basically permanently banned in solo queue because if games ever get a little bit chaotic and everyone's killing each other, uh, his objective control and his ability to take over slightly tilted team fights and turn them into landslides uh, is pretty much unmatched. This could actually be Bjergsen or Odd One, and they can swap the Pantheon and Kazix however they want. Ooh, yeah. It'll be very interesting to see how TSM decides to play this one. That Kha'Zix pick looks like it can wreak quite a bit of havoc right now. There's only the Annie crowd control that's really going to shut him down if he jumps in the middle of the fight. they got to bring something else. Well, Vi stands for violence, and they can maybe lock down Kha'Zix when he jumps in yeah. uh, to these ones. This this is uh, probably going to be more violent than a normal poke composition game, mm. only because TSM has shown so much aggressiveness in the past. And also, Dignitas doesn't really play low-kill games. They almost always have a lot of death and destruction, which is why I really like that Kha'Zix pick for Bjergsen. So which lane does Crumbs go to? Do they want to shut down Bjergsen, or is it not a point because he can come back at any it's time? Actually, it's actually pretty difficult to shut down uh, or to gank four in Italy lane, even True. though he okay, can get yeah, the Kha'Zix yeah. down because he doesn't have any crowd control or huge amounts of burst damage a lot he can of with. I think if we're going to predict a lane to gank in, it's going to be bottom lane. The Annie combined with the Pantheon is tremendous kill potential. And that's what I expect to see out of Dick. Well, something we've been taking a look at is that level two between the AD carries and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And Annie's one get of it the, first. the biggest crusher of the level two yeah. stun. So we'll see as the champs are locked in, who you at home picked to win this last game of the day. According to lolesports.com, 85% of you feel the Team Solo Mid is going to come out with the win here. Not giving Dig too much credit, fans. Well, that's pretty TSM-focused vote. And crowd. I think until they lose, <laughs> they're going to be close to that.
There's a little bit of the catalyst to get them going for this game. It always seems like when you're in NA, yeah. you're on TSM's home turf. Seems like. Fans brought their Beer King hats yeah. down in the stands. They do. They have, there's a lot of those hats around. Yeah. Supporting him, and he's really shown. He was the hype, like we said. He was the guy that everybody on social media was talking about when he got here, and he's, let, he's kind of held up the end of his bargain. Oh, yeah. He has been ridiculously good. He, he was ridiculously good in the European LCS as well. Uh, even though everyone always talks about Peke yeah. in that, you know, Alex, those amazing mid laners. Bjergsen was right on their level, uh, but didn't have the same supporting cast that those guys had. So he was getting picked on almost every game. Now that he's more experienced as well, with a stronger supporting cast here in TSM, Bjergsen really found his home. We'll have to see what can be done. Skara, he's been in mid for a while as well. His home has mm -hmm. been there since the beginning. His home's so. been Dignitas yep. for a very long time. Yeah, that time. is true. Very true. The team's facing off against each other. There it is, TSM versus Dignitas. We are into the rift. 44th game here in the spring split. Last game, week five, day one. Let's see what these teams have for each other. TSM on blue, Dig on red. I like that. 44th game in the split. Yeah. Getting up there. Getting quick. in those numbers, yeah. yeah. Every team plays 28 games in the regular season. Obviously, TSM, their goal is Worlds, but it all starts with having a good split. You've got to remember, they're pretty close as well to beating Cloud9's win streak of 13 so far. Mm -hmm. They're on a bit of a rampage themselves there, 9-1. and one. Boom, fight him. Club to the face. Oh, he bit him too. Yeah. God, you learn not Double to do club. that early, but he's still a biter. Cruz didn't throw anything back at him either. No, Cruiser was usually the one that throws the cleavers. Turn oh. over New Leaf. You have to. Sometimes it's different. They're looking to get back a win streak here, so things need to be done different from the get-go. Already we got the Doran start for Dyrus with the blade up to Cruiser's shield there. Let's see how that goes as they start off the top lane. It won't be something we look at too much, but we are expecting Dyrus to be ahead. So, yeah. like we said, a lot of these lanes are for Dignitas to win. TSM's the one that's in the lead. Early ganking is obviously going to have a huge play on the way Bjergsen and Skara's yeah. lane plays out. Skara has the range advantage on Bjergsen, mm -hmm. but Kha'Zix loves to get level 2 early, get his jump, and just try and isolate someone and burst them down as quickly as possible. That lane is uh, very variant as far as it turns out, and the fact that TSM has Pantheon on their side. We just got to see an XGG game with a jungle Pantheon who yep. was not very active early on in ganking. Didn't get countered either. Yeah, we'll see if TSM can be more active early. They did just walk through a ward, however. Uh, and another. <laughs> gonna hatch that one up. Neither of them really got a shot on it. But they are gonna down. have vision. Mm. So he pulled it, a, I believe he's pulled it around to finish it off. In the jungle there. It's a red buff steel that Dignitas found. This is, yeah. this is gonna create a fair bit of interesting play if Crumbs decides to steal the red on are the other side. Double gank mid after this? No, it's too pushed up. Thought they were going to hover. It's just taking them a little longer to get that red buff. Oh, Come they on. are taking forever yeah, it, with this. It keeps walking back, guys. Come on oh, now. No. This is not good. But Cruiser's out of lane, so he's not getting experience either. But I guess nothing's dying in the lane, so that was odd. This does a couple bad things for TSM. It means Crumbs easily gets double buffs without being contested. It also means Dyrus is immediately behind Cruiser in the lane. Obviously, since Mundo is a non-interactive laner, he generally just wants to farm. Dyrus should be able to come back. But the slow start from the odd one makes him very yeah. vulnerable to counter ganks from Crumbs because right now, Crumbs is a step ahead of him because he's already got double buffs. He's going to go ahead and take the rates as well. He knows he has a little time in the jungle to hang out, be by himself. Odd one's not going to have smite for a bit on the blue buff, so it's only going to slow him down, not really give him too much trouble. We'll see where Dignitas decides to go with this. It looks like Vi, or Crumbs, yeah, the Vi, left up some rates there as well. So he's giving Odd one a little bit of trouble where he can. Yep. Going to go clear out his jungle as quickly as possible as well. Just power farm a little bit on Vi. That's pretty common for the Vi strategy. He's also staying closer to the middle uh, mm. middle lane because he wants to be able to protect Scar from potential Pantheon ganks. Yeah, it's almost the same way it used to be for TSM. Odd one was in the back pocket of Reginald when he was there, and he's always there on the backside to help Bjergsen out as well. Dyrus and Cruiser going back and forth. A good bit of minion damage as well, giving Cruiser a bit of the upper hand. How did that happen? It's 13 to 5. Uh, he wasn't, yeah, he wasn't in the lane. missed a couple. Huzzah! Puts him in the face. Odd one getting hit up there and gets out the attack. Looks like oh. the slow is going to be on, but Dyrus, Cruiser went around the long way. Couldn't help. 
Yeah, if that cleaver would have landed, though, I wouldn't have been too surprised to see a cruiser flash over the wall in an attempted finish. That was a good counter gank by Crumbs. He expected Odd One to be up there at that time. They just couldn't convert much more. Looks like Odd One's put himself in a sticky spot here, not being able to get up and help too much with these ganks. Dyrus doing what he can. Like you said, up 10 CS. Hopefully he can keep Cruiser under the turret here. Turret, or uh, teleport rather on Cruiser. Dyrus with that ignite. We kind of saw this last game as well. Dyrus can go aggressive if he wants. Yeah, there is a chance if he goes uh, an offensive trundle build like right. Blade of the Rune King, he could get Mundo kills. I wouldn't be too surprised to see Dyrus go for a Hydra on trundle. That's something I saw debuted by Darian in the European LCS. It's because one of Trundle's weaknesses, even though he's a fantastic duelist, is his ability to clear waves and then get back to supporting the team. Mm. If you build a Hydra, that is no longer a problem. Very early roam uh, by Bjergsen walking through a ward, though. Yeah, being seen there, Cruiser using that trinket effectively. He's pushed off about 10 CS still in that lane. Odd One is on the bottom side of the map. He'll get himself backed. Some items purchased here as Dignitas is trying to suffocate Turtle under the turret for a little bit. The wave's back in their favor for now. Right, and this is the lane that Dignitas has the biggest edge in. Caitlyn Annie mm. uh, would be their bread and butter if, you know, QD5 played more Caitlyn. But the matchup itself uh, is much more powerful than the Thresh Lucian, unless they get some nice uh, hook support. A little rendezvous in the top brush. Level 5 Dyrus, who has been staying in lane to that cruiser, who's getting a little bit of zone defense put on him. So he'll do what he can Dyrus to stay in. Is beating up on him. Yeah, even on low mana, yep. he has a huge upper hand there. Jumping in on Ascara, good heal coming out, but Bjergsen still having the upper hand on a second attack. That was easy win for him there. Ooh, Ooh fancy feet. Wouldn't have been a win for much longer no. if he ate that spear. But some nice work there by Bjergsen. He had no fear of the Crumbs gang, which is why Crumbs is coming around again. Scar basically just said, Bjergsen's playing really aggressive right now. Yeah. Uh, if he does that again, Crumbs could punish. You can see him trying to hover towards the top side. He won't get too much help from Odd One. Ooh. He's level four. Dyrus is like going to hit six big. off this wave, I believe, and then they might try a turret dive before Cruiser does. There it is. Could get the subjugate down any second now. The ignite would only be a crusher. He's not even level six, so he can't put on sadism. First blood comes in quite easy and quick for TSM. That was just solid communication across the board. Uh, it's probably going to cost them the dragon, however. It is arguable which one of these two is better. Uh, but Cruiser didn't necessarily need to die when Odd One roams up around six and a half minutes. Mm. It does mean the dragon is takeable. <laughs> nice little hook, but it's not going to be much. Try to flay through the wall. I would have been impressed. But they do try to give him a bit of harass. Yeah. One thing you can see, though, is the dragon gave 125 gold per person right there, mm. uh, which multiplied is 625. First blood is worth 600, right? So it's actually a very even gold trade. And now it's going to be a matter of that uh, evenly distributed gold on Dignitas right. is better than the concentrated gold on the Odd One and Dyrus. We'll see if Cutie Pie can start taking off. That gives him a little bit more help. Bjergsen putting on the dance in the mid lane. Just trying to get Skara out of his game a little bit with the mind games. He's farming really well on Kazakhs. He is completely scared Scar off from trying to harass him with Nidalee. Which means everything goes to Bjergsen and he can become a very large roaming threat very soon because Scar is giving him all the inches in that lane. I mean, he can shove up and then roam when he wants. Teamwork in jungle pressure here. We heard it from Kobe. TSM continues to do it. Yeah, trying to get that red buff refresh. They cost themselves a little bit in the early jungle. Let's see if they can get this one back. Cruiser is just not feeling confident whatsoever. Going to give it up. Yeah, that one no was a crumbs. little easier than the first yeah. one. Pulled that one around probably. But they did still have the timer. So they make use of it. And they got good wards towards the top side. You can see when Bjergsen is getting scared, that's the side he's always hovering. And it's going to help more once Odd One gets Grand, grand Skyfall that Bjergsen can maybe bait in a few of these kills yeah. that Crumbs and Scar are trying to lock down. Well, Dyrus is definitely going to have an upper hand in this lane for some time. Yeah. Uh, Odd One made sure of that early on. And I do actually want to point out the different philosophies of counter jungling. We've seen them from both teams here. When TSM cleared the red buff early, they killed all the small camps so they could get the timer because they wanted to make a return trip. But when Crumb stole the red buff of TSM, he left the small ones because he was trying to deny experience from the odd one who was already slow in his jungle. That does mean, though, that the repeat attempt by Dignitas would be blind because they don't know when that buff is coming back up and they can't continue to punish. We've seen that.
get the better of a few teams when you go for a little bit too much. It looks like Dig gets the wards down to keep going for what they have. Keeping it even right now. Skara building up the needlessly large rod first. We'll see where he decides to go with that. He gets a ward for safety. Looks like he'll stay in mid lane for now. This game is poised to explode fairly shortly. Crumbs at level 6 wants to get his first Vigank off. And also Odd One, who has pretty much not been farming that much, has hit 6 on Pantheon and is going to be looking for a gank as well. Uh, ideally for these teams, they clash in the same moment. Uh, whoever would get the... Honestly, whoever ganks first would probably get the edge because there's so much damage that would come out of either one of these ganks. Odd one. Waiting. You can see him squatting. He's getting ready to jump, but it does not look like he has the chance here. They go in on each other. Great That's damage, actually, it. from Skara. The barrier comes out right away, but the ignite really hurting the heal there. Great dodge. Bjergsen throws on his own all. Yeah, so Kiwi Kid had roamed up. Uh, very interesting fight there. Odd one decided not to support because he was too far back, and he saw the Annie. But Bjergsen gets out of that one pretty much unscathed. Now it's all about the damage that the turret takes. Still dodging out, so we get a little bit of roam now from Kiwi Kid. Dignitas is looking to put themselves on the map, but not just yet. Cutie Pie very, very low in the bottom lane as they just went and engaged him and Turtle back and forth. Yeah, we definitely going to see a gank top here, though. There's no Mundo ult, but Dyrus' ultimate is up. Let's see how much damage they can throw down. Oh, Crumbs is still trying to be omnipresent just in the mid lane. Now walks it up the river. Dyrus is going to be safe with the subjugate on. Crumbs didn't even bother trying to ult. They got the right. Trundle ult up and they realized he was so tanky. Uh, and also it's not necessarily the easiest gank support with Mundo since he never brings Ignite. Uh, they wouldn't be able to burst him down very easily. Dyer's trying to turn a little bit of aggression back around. Just gonna go ahead and chomp up these minions. You know, he got the Cutlass on. A little bit of that passive healing, making it nice for him. He'll be okay in that lane, even with no mana. Still, like we said, or like I said earlier rather, Dyrus lane to lose. His, la his lane to lose, yeah. rather. Cruiser it needs really to is. be playing good. 95 to 30, 65 with 30 CS difference. See how well Dyrus can continue to punish uh, Mundo. People yeah. like to survive in lane on Mundo, so with just the one death, Cruiser can still recover from this. Yeah. Very well so. But overall, TSM is winning the lanes by about 600 gold. We know that Dignitas obviously took the dragon when Cruiser died, which would equalize in that gold, meaning the other 700 farm is just TSM farming more. Pink Ward's starting to come out. They know and actually ping it out on the side of Dig. So they're going to try to get that as soon as possible here. And Bjergsen, he's just being a pest in the mid lane, letting Scar know he's still there, really not taking the advantage and the push in the lane to go do other things. Yeah, he's, he's pretty content as farming. You yep. can see since he's got the team out now, he's taking the race. I remember the jungle mid lane feature. Ottawa said, I need to gank for Bjergsen, otherwise he's going to take my race. I really have no choice in the matter. <laughs> Odwin hasn't been ganking for Bjergsen, so Bjergsen took his rates, as they have predicted. That abusive relationship, just a vicious cycle. Let's see what Bjergsen can hold off for himself. Like you said, farming very well. He's even over Dyrus on this, 114 to 91 in the mid lane, but Skara, still that behind in CS, will have an impact on his spear, so he's doing okay for now. Looking to see if Crumbs can really make an impact on any of these lanes. It's only been a death to Cruiser. That's the only action we've seen from them. Yeah, Spear to the face in the mid lane. Bjergsen going to have to go. We got some lifesteal. But it's really interesting in the bottom lane. Look at all the wards that are in the river and TSM's jungle right there. They're waiting for Crumbs to approach so that Odd One could counter gank with Pantheon. At this point, though, since Bjergsen went back to base, it's just another dragon. And Bjergsen's actually not in position. Great call. Kiwi Kid could get locked out here. It's going to be Wild Turtle Special onto Ooh. Kiwi. That calls Cutie Pie back. This is going to be some good damage here. Cutie Pie, wow, he's going pretty hard on this one. But he knows the team is behind him. All the communication with the teleport from Cruiser. Ace oh. in the hole. Did he just flash? Yep. No, he did not. He was trying to flash into a block, but Dignitas cleans that one up. A turret died in the top lane with the teleport coming down from Dignitas. They're cleaning up here. Let's see how much more they can get while TSM pressures the other solo lanes. Very nice job. Bjergsen trying to get this locked down in the mid lane. He is going to let that crash into the turret while he does some damage. And Dyrus as well. So they're working two for this one turret. Let's see if they can get him. Yeah, that was a little bit of an explosion. There was no Pantheon ult burned either. And there's the burst uh, from Bjergsen as he's pushing that mid lane. It is a continuation of domination in the top lane, though, for Dyrus. And Trundle is going to be a big problem. There's the gank. Oh, he's going to be way out of the circle in time. Oh, the spear, or the, the spikes, rather, on the barrier. Not enough. Looks like Ooh. odd one. Ooh. 
I gotta say, really poor coordination by TSM on that gank. Odd one, his man drop was later than when Bjergsen yep. would aggress, so Scar was running away anyway. And Odd one just opened himself up to a bunch of counterattack from the turret by the time he dropped in. So two to one as Dig makes a few moves to get themselves a bottom lane gank in their favor and stop one that was also coming onto them. 15 minutes into this game, the gold has been evened out again, and that's the story of the day. Each team just kind of inching back, trying to grab a lead. But once the big lead comes in, it's almost unstoppable from that point. So yeah. see who gets it first. TSM's win streak, nine games yeah. right now. Dignitas like to be the streak breakers. They beat Cloud9, first team to beat them on the year. Let's see if they can be the second team to beat TSM. You know, North American LCS getting closer and closer to the European LCS as far as anyone can beat anyone. Yeah. CLG destroyed Cloud9 this morning. And Dignitas sticking right with TSM here, getting some nice early siege in the mid lane as well. These spears, that one split in the uprights, the ace in the hole coming in. They have so many things to dodge right now. And the traps again. Yeah, the longer they wait here, the harder it becomes for TSM to get in. Not only do they have to take shots from the poke, more traps will get placed from Skara, meaning when they jump in, their armored magic resist would be shredded because they're going to be running over those Nidalee traps, or they just won't be able to move because they hit a Caitlyn trap. Yeah, Dignitas knows they're kind of stretching a bit here in the mid lane, but they know they're also getting a bit of a lead oh, out of it. Cruiser with the ignite on, one oh. more jump! He's not in range! Oh, so close, and the flash is being blown for that one. Just a pixel away. He was trying to get that Q yep. bite off, but he wasn't quite in range because the cleaver hit him right in the face. Very close to turning oh, over the kill. Bjergsen, no jump left. He's going to try to bug out on this one. Gets hit up. Assault battery. Vault breaker. They're going to open this one up, and it's going to be full of gold. Whoop. The invisibility comes off, and he's found by Amakuti. Nice collapse there by Kiwi Kid. Three assists for three Dignitas kills. He's played Annie six times. This is his seventh time on Annie. The most comfortable champion for Kiwi Kid by far. And pretty much every time we see him on Annie, he is so involved in the team play, roaming around. Bjergsen has to be mindful of where Kiwi Kid is when he decides to split push. It's like they're trying to clean up everything they can in the jungle. You can see Tibbers kind of being a personal sentry there for Kiwi Kid as they make sure they're safe. And it looks like they will be, even just looking at the wards. Five to six wards placed on the bottom side of that jungle, trying to get the pink wards out already. They're really starting to take control over what looked like was TSM's early game. Yeah, that is just a smattering of wards. You can see Crumbs just picked up a few extras as well. A pink and a regular yep. sight ward. And he probably can't even put it down. That's his pink, I bet. Uh, yeah. No. He's, <laughs> yeah, he's ward capped out. He's yeah. got to wait for his ward to die. Warding is a team effort. But Absolutely. really, uh, I'm looking at Scar's item build. Mm -hmm. I think when TSM sees this, they should put an extra priority on trying to deny the next Dignitas blue buff. Uh, Scar skipped his Athene's Unholy Grail because most Nidalees need it for mana. He didn't want to build it because he doesn't need magic resist against Bjergsen. Right. Fair enough. But that means he will really have mana problems if he doesn't have blue. Uh, it's, if TSM can ever get that away from him, Scar will become a bit of a non-factor. See if TSM kind of takes this into consideration. Something so small as just the blue a few times would put mm -hmm. Scar behind enough for them to really gain that lead we were just talking about. Once you get it, it's really hard to come back. At least today, teams are being very definitive once they have that gold in their favor. Right now at 3-1, to one, 18 minutes, TSM's given Dig a little bit of respect here in these fights. Yeah, there has been two dragons thus far that have went to Dignitas. Mm -hmm. None of them have had Dyrus in the fight. As far as head-to-head -head matchups go, Dyrus is much farther ahead of anyone else. He's 6,300 gold compared to 5,600 of Cruiser. If they had a fight at Dragon with Dyrus participating, it would be TSM's chance to get back into this game. See what Dyrus can do. The teleport is on to Cruiser and 40 seconds on the Dragon. So you see the wards coming in for TSM, getting them around the blue buff. Looks like a lot of the trinkets have died or been swept out in the bottom side for Team Solo mid. And Dig, what yeah. can I get back in? Well, this is actually not what I expected because Dignitas has Caitlyn and Vi in the top lane. They're trying to shut down Dyrus and get down uh, their third turret of the game so they can really open the map up. That just means they don't care about the dragon. They're willing to trade this third turret for a dragon at this point. Uh, it means the gold's going to be even, and it means they don't necessarily have to deal with Dyrus. Good clear here. It's going to have to be reacted to. 
And TSM is going straight for actually the second tier Smart. on this. They don't have Vi. Nothing really scares them off of this turret. And they're going to go on to Cruiser as well. Tibber is just behind coming in from the hands of Kiwi Kid. But it's not enough. It just pushes them off the turret after the kill. Yeah, that was a good dive. But got to keep in mind right now, there's still an Amicutie Pie in the side lane. Going to try and push down the second turret while TSM is distracted with the dragon. How is TSM going to respond to this? Thing to toss usually doesn't go for the split push until they can get all three lanes being pushed, but they're being forced into this. TSM does get a dragon out of it, but they lose the second tier as well from Cutie Pie. Yeah, very tactical trade right there. Teams just not really wanting to fight each other. Another thing that's a little bit new about Dignitas and TSM here, normally this matchup is really bloody. It's either really fast game, stomp on either side, or just a total kill fest on both sides. The team's definitely turning over a bit of a new leaf here. Dignitas with the poke heavy composition with Nidalee and Caitlyn. Oh! As Scar gets his other enemy blue buff. Doesn't have to worry about that. Nice. One. Really smart. One game after the other, Nidalee players finding themselves some cheeky blue steals on the spears. 20 minutes into this one, Dignitas is trying to creep that lead up. Wild Turtle, 168 to 179 in that bottom lane. Cutie Pie on a new AD carry this game. Yep. Turtle trying to bring in that Lucian again. We said he already has two wins on it. Let's see if we can make it another one. He's, getting, he's having a hard game. Not the usual. It's not the usual. Against uh, Cutie Pie and Kiwi Kid, it's tricky for him. You know, Cutie Pie is a very, very good AD carry. Kiwi Kid as well, by far in his most comfortable support. They've just been able to out-aggress him a little bit. Yeah. Annie is a very hard matchup for Thresh. Thresh loves to normally get in a lot of harass with his 475 range on this patch, 450 on the next patch. <laughs> uh, and that just means Annie is in range to stun him. Mm -hmm. They're going to look to try and get a catch. They got him! Oh, he got that, that was so unfortunate, he jumped right into it. Yeah, he thought he was safe, was trying to ward up the Baron area, but that's that Thresh vision control. Are they going to do it again? No! Don't go back into the brush! Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. The other team probably gets Baron. Cutie Pie, don't do it. Cutie Pie, don't do it! Oh, Cutie Pie, don't no. do it! No! Third time's a charm! Oh my god, they bring him into the pit! What a flash! Pulls in the smite, even though it pulled him in range of the ultimate from Caitlyn. This is a Baron for TSM. Really decisive play right here while Dick split focus. An Instant thought process calculation going on to the flash that brought him into the pit. It looks like it's going to bring him into a Baron as well. The lead once again sways the other way. Wow. And even with that Baron, the gold is still pretty close. That yeah. just goes to I was show just you say, that's crazy. how Dignitas actually had a bit of a lead, but just time and time again. There's one. They burst down Scar. And of course, they get the reset, so they can all just, they didn't even need to. They just They're not around. there. It's okay. Oh, get him again. Whee! Uh, but then the clever play right here actually was jumping over to I'm a Cutie Pie uh, to burst him down. And then as soon as Bjergsen gets ulted in, he pulls Crumbs right into the pit. It doesn't necessarily matter uh, that he ended up dying to the I'm a Cutie Pie ultimate because that meant the steel threat was gone for TSN. Crazy, crazy games all day long. Keep it coming, gentlemen. 23 minutes into this, TSM versus Dig. Definitely pleasing everyone as it should. 35,000 gold to 34.8. Gold is still right there, neck and neck. Dignitas yeah. has been able to split the map open a little bit more. Five to three in turrets. Those two extra turrets are those outer second tier turrets. So they're just looking to gun down mid. It becomes a bit of a spear dodging contest right now oh. uh, for TSM because the Baron buff is their advantage. Therefore, they want to push these mid turrets. But if Scar lands a good spear, the push would be over. Scar is without blue buff though. Remember how important that is with no big mana regeneration item. Uh, this means TSM is just going to continue pushing. You can see he's very low on mana already, trying to put out as many traps as he can to keep the vision up, as well as whatever they can get in shredding that resistance to win this fight. The oh, turret the going hook. down very low, the hook not on what they want, and Kiwi Kid says, yes, I'm initiating on one. Almost gets Ooh. hit up the Peacemaker, very low. He's got a huge wall of people to stop that. You never know with those ones. <laughs> I've somebody, seen him sneak through. Somebody moves, you get a pie to the face, yeah. and it's all over. Uh, that was really nice play by Amicutie Pie. The sole defender for Dignitas right now. Obviously, the initiation attempt by Kiwi Kid pushed them off the turret. And they get out of a sticky situation where Scar was out of mana and a barrened up team was pushing down the mid lane. Boom. Boom. Blasting those, out the wave. Showed those minions. Just giving the lane some breathing. Breathing room. He'll be all right. Wild Turtle, he's roaming around by himself. You can see TSM feels 
pretty confident to be doing something like this. They know exactly that Dig is not going to aggress. They feel like they're behind, and TSM is abusing that. Yeah, both teams really have to be so careful, though. Uh, we already saw what can happen if Dignitas walks near a brush that they don't know what, mm -hmm. where it is. Death Sentence comes out, Bjergsen flies out of nowhere and eats him. Uh, on the other side, one Nidalee Spear can take a squishy target to about half health. Uh, and then there's plenty of follow-up. But here comes a dive right out of the turret. That Skyfall is indeed grand, and they get onto Cruiser. There is the hook from Thresh. Cruiser's the focus. Anybody else? No one wants a piece. Who burns a flash as well. Tankiest man down once again. Baron buff still having some time left. TSM not wanting to relent this push. They want as much as possible out of this buff. Cruiser has been a pretty big factor for Dig in the top lane. Goes TSM down made sure to shut him down this game, and now they're taking inhibitor turrets. Dignitas cannot answer. No tank for Dignitas to go in right now. They're just not willing to engage 5v5. Ooh, Smart ooh. for them to give up that inhibitor. Unfortunately, cannot follow up on these spears that are taking hundreds, if not almost a thousand HP at a time off of Team Solo Mid. They're just watching the damage and hoping they can get a kill out of it by another spear. Six to four, 25 minutes in. TSM is backing. Could probably make a final push here soon. Ooh. Dignitas would have to walk into something unfortunate right here. It's still a very, very close game. Uh, Baron Buff is going to be gone yep. from TSM very soon. They did get a lot of advantages right there. You can see the turrets have kind of been equalized. Uh, but once this dragon goes down to Dignitas, it's only going to be about a 1,500 gold lead. Yeah. A lot of good things coming out backwards for, or back from Dignitas here. The fact that I'm a cutie pie is getting more and more farmed uh, is incredibly key. Pantheon will fall off a little bit now that we've reached this 26 minute point in the game. Uh, and even though Dignita or TSM has had a lot of mm -hmm. success focusing down Cruiser, uh, if they don't get that tank out of the way, it will be more difficult for them to engage cleanly. It's very hard to finish a game against a team with so much range like Dignitas has. So we see TSM now back down to the bottom lane. Quite a bit of time till Baron comes up. So this is the inhibitor they want to work. Mid will be the next one. They don't have too much of a wave here yet. It should be enough to take this one down as they've already prepped it. Be the last outer it. turret, yeah, pretty much indefensible. If they would try to defend that one, it would most likely be game. And this is the decisive moment right here for TSM. If they if they try and dive this without Baron buff, uh, it could very easily go wrong. There we go, getting the traps down. Thought they were being a little lax on it, but they were just waiting for the cooldowns to come up. Not too much of a gold lead here, but Team Solo Mid is absolutely making it work on the players they do have that gold on. Odd One didn't have the strongest Pantheon game, but the whole team has been making it work. Yeah, they're trying to get a push in while uh, Dig is defending the inhibitor turrets. But again, a lot of harass. Odd One's almost completely out of his fight. Another spear lands. Let's see if Dig continues to chase. That was a bit of miscommunication. The talisman of a in a turn. Wears off. And then they go in the fight. They got Kiwi Kid. No. Kiwi Kid doesn't even have a chance in this fight. Bjergsen gets out with the ultimate on. They're turning it around. Crumbs and Cruiser just both lose a hell of a lot of health coming in from the Skyfall. It looks like they're going to continue. A calling going straight at the backside of Dig pushes them off of the fight. All told, two for one right there. TSM did make the turn, they got a couple of kills, but that was dangerous. You could definitely see once they got a little bit of poke down, TSM had to start running away. Uh, I think Dignitas chased a little bit too hard. You can see, look at how low everyone on TSM is before the fight started. Uh, and this goes to show you how much stronger TSM really is in a team fight, that they came out on top in this one. Uh, ooh, dead before anyone gets there. And then the odd one gets a lot of Grand Skyfall damage down as well. But once again, like, that was off of a fight where TSM started very low. So in future yeah. fights, if TSM can engage before they've been poked down, it goes to show you how much of an advantage it is. But there's also the fear that Dignitas can do so much damage before TSM is even engaged in them. It just means TSM has to be even more decisive. I really would have wanted to see what happened if they got that fight as soon as Kiwi could hit the, the Talisman of Ascension. Because they waited for it to wear off, and they almost telegraphed the fact that, hey, we're coming in, here it is. Like you said, TSM did react quite accordingly. Picked up eight to five in kills here, and a 3,000 gold lead as it starts to spread. Baron is alive, and looks like everybody's gonna have a chance. Scar doing some big damage with his spears right now. Yeah, you know, hard, hard damage with the Rabadons into the Void Staff. 
And there isn't too much magic resistance across the board. It's really just on Dyrus and Odlin right now, because everybody yeah. else is building that damage. Yeah, at that point. Let's see if they get another initiation. Cruiser pops you off from early, meaning TSM should just back off and wait that one out, making the next TSM team fight even stronger. Pre I really, Cruiser, he's died so much this game. Yeah. I think he's just a little twitchy with that ultimate. Did not need to use it there. You see DSM trying to completely make Dig adapt on this one. Dignitas does not want to really walk into this. They know that they're not going to be doing the Baron with Vision. So they just hold it steady, and TSM finally kind of grunts, sighs, and says, okay, we'll fight in the mid. <laughs> one of the really big things to keep a track, track of yeah. as the team fights grow as well is that I'm a QD Pie is building a bunch of damage. Uh, when he can finish off wow. that Infinity Edge, he will be the single most threatening person on the map. It just means that even though TSM has a big teamfight advantage, unless they can close on a I'm a cutie pie in the later game team fights, it might actually swing back the other direction because Caitlyn will outcarry Lucian. We will see. Those headshots are going to hurt pretty good. The they pillar. get across the pillar. Oh, Skyfall. the Skyfall almost could be four men right in the middle of it. Wow, Kiwi Kid gets obliterated. Cutie Pie's trying to get out. No damage from the 4-0 one. Three. Caitlyn, Cruiser's going to go down. Oh, my God, still going around with Kha'Zix. Can he get a fourth? Cruiser goes down to the hands of a special. Crumbs runs from the fight in a four for nothing. Yeah, that was almost the makings of a Penico right there when Bjergsen started hopping around, but it was the right time for TSM to get a fight. They had taken absolutely no poke, and they closed down onto I'm a Cutie Pie. The two things we had just talked about that they needed to do, but the smite is still alive. They're going to see him coming in, though. Uh-oh! Oh, right over the wall. He gives him a punch to the face, but this is going to be an easy one, two, three. The Baron again in the hands of Team Solo Mid, and it now looks quite grim for Dignitas. Yeah, one more look at that fight. Grand Skyfall with the Whoa. box trapped everyone in there. Plus, he just shreds them down. So Bjergsen can go and get the cleanup. And this is the moment where you're kind of thinking he was getting the pentakill, but he short jumped <laughs> to Cruiser. Otherwise, he could have finished him off with another Q, and it slowed down the uh, Goomba stomping from Bjergsen. There it goes, Baron over once again. There's that gold lead jet. Like we said, once it happens with a few thousand gold, it just starts to kick off from there. And TSM now 54,000 to 47,000. They have eight turrets in their favor, which means three are on the map for Dignitas. And it's actually one of those Nexus turrets being down. Yeah, I would also say this has been a much better game than the first time they played. Mm. Uh, both these teams have improved a lot since the start of the season. Dignitas even though they've come up on the short end of the stick here, haven't really made uh, many bad calls. They've been caught by TSM making aggressive plays. And they're still trying to keep their gold up by going for Dragon at the right times. You can see Skara still packs a punch with those Nidalee Spears. Good hands they're the down. Catch. They're down by a lot right now, but uh, not forgotten. Down by a lot, and they made sure, TSM made sure to do that the right way. Benny has four wins on that Mundo pick. He's played it five times. They made sure to shut him down first. He's been a big factor for Dignitas. And since then, TSM has had a walk in the park after he was out of the game. Mm -hmm. Early ganks by the odd one. Definitely shut out. Cruz with the bruiser in this. And Dyrus knows how to punish. He's on a three-game deathless streak yeah. right now as well. Continuing to just be such a rock in that top lane that TSM can always rely on. Very, very helpful. It means that Bjergsen can play those very squishy junglers. An another thing that teams have to worry about when they pick Jungle Pantheon is the general double tank that teams like to do isn't nearly as effective with Pantheon because Pantheon has to build so much damage early on in the game. It puts even more stress on making sure Dyrus gets farmed. And of course he has been farmed, which is why this is working for TSM. In his own right, he played that lane perfectly to come out of it. 1-0 and 8. Did the same thing almost on Shivana just last week. He's been playing incredibly on any champion you put in his hands. And right now really has TSM in the forefront of this game. Yeah, and this could be a decisive push. With mm -hmm. an inhibitor down and a Nexus turret down, TSM might wait for that turret to hit or oh, they just go wow. as soon as possible because that turret is getting chunked down. Practically not there on the engagement. Odd One's only stopped for a second by the cupcake, but you see Cruiser again throwing off the ultimate because he was forced to. Nobody even helped him engage on that one. Wow, that spear was full range. Yeah, Turtle took a lot of spears, but Dignitas will have to go back and defend that Nexus turret. When that happens, TSM's gonna go in. There's the drop. Dyrus throws down the frozen plane. Can he get in for the fight? Again, onto Cruiser right away. The ultimate is not up for him yet, and he gets taken down by Skara in the last hit. No, 
rather taken down by Odd One. It looks like they're going to go for the inhibitor. Turtle went down in that fray as well, but they get the inhibitor, which is essentially what they came for. They can still rotate right. and continue their assault. Baron Buff still taking slowly on these guys. They have quite a bit of time with it. Dignitas is looking to clean up the base, clean up all this shattered glass, and hopefully get back out into the field. They have an inhibitor to come up in the top lane soon. That bottom one, though, you just saw that go down. Yeah, TSM losing their marksman while yeah. Turtle decide that it's not a good idea to siege turrets. Uh, they would have like no range to siege that turret in the mid lane if they really wanted to. So it's probably smart of them to back up. Uh, their Baron buff will be gone, but I think because they have two inhibitors down now, their next assault up the mid lane will not be dissuaded because they don't have Baron buff. They have a big enough lead that they will confidently go up that mid lane. Pretty much all they have left. The waves are going to be pushing very nicely. And Dignitas knows it. They're like, let's get out of base as quick as we can. Nobody's on our side of the map, but they really don't know that. No wards out for Dignitas right now. They're guessing. And they have to be thinking that somebody is in that brush right next to them every time they go by. So hard hats on for Dig. Crumbs is going to go ahead and soak up what he can. And you can see them sticking together on the top side of the map, making sure yep. that everybody is in a safe spot. Well, they got to make sure they stay safe. It's just so hard to stop TSM from initiating on them. Uh, I don't really see teams pull off poke compositions against TSM just in the history of their team, thinking all the way back to Season 2, because they've always been willing to fully commit to right. team fights when it matters. Uh, and TSM will be fully committed on I'm a cutie pie since he is at those big four damage items now. Looking at this mid lane, 270 to 222. Bjergsen on Kha'Zix has had quite a strong game. Give him a carry, and he will do just that, especially when the other lanes are doing so well. We saw even when he was on Nidalee, he had a great game. Going into Cougar for more, into the fight, Scar has been really on the backside. Yeah, well, he's had to be because right. they have such a poke-oriented team, and TSM is so strongly initiating him. Yeah. He's always been forced to jump out rather than in. See what they do. Going for the top turret. We said that we would respawn soon. The inhibitor, rather. I don't know if they're going to get any damage that's significant enough. Cutie Pie in the front of the fight taking a bit of spike damage there. It looks like Dyrus is going to focus on the inhibitor. They are slowly going through this base, and Dig is forced to watch. Mm, they don't want to engage them straight up. Dignitas has no blue buff on Scar as well. Uh, might see a final fight very shortly here. This is as crazy as it looks. This is a very calm, cool, and collected team solo mid as they enter the base. One kill there. Cutie Pie is the next one. Another bit of a short hop jump, but that's the Aegis stun coming in. Oh, uh -oh. he's going for the Fountain Grand Skyfall. Everybody's going to be out of it, but it looks cool anyways. They're on the back side of the Fountain. The Nexus turrets are going to fall down here, and Dig's going to do what they can to end this, but the Nexus will go down. Team solo mid, 10 and 1 on the split, and they extend that streak. Another solid game for TSM right there. It was close, though, for a while. Dignitas put up one hell of a fight against these guys. You can tell there's an XL from Dyrus. It was tense at times. Dyrus did very well in the top lane. By the end of it, Bjergsen was very solid on Kazakh. But there was a shaky middle ground right there for TSM that they were able to pull through through. There's the man on your screen. Has not died in three games coming in. Dyrus has had an incredible season so far in that top lane and he's doing it on different champions all of tsm have an incredible season a 10 and one tart start to a split is very impressive especially when they're up against cloud nine and teams of that caliber as well. strong play all around the picks for dignitas looked like what they wanted nidalee was the yeah. first time coming in for scara May not have been enough uh, as Skara is one of the factors, the big carries we've been looking at lately when Jinx isn't on Cutie Pie, when everybody else isn't getting yeah. their stuff. And Cutie Pie had a whole bunch of items in that game, but he had, at the end of the day, no tank line to protect him. Right. Cruiser got picked on so heavily, Crumbs was never really able to get going on Vi, that things did fall apart yeah. for doing a toss down the stretch. Still, I would say, an incredibly well-played game by both sides. A pretty incredible game.